So I posted on my Instagram recently, my hair's a mess, um, recently about just having a hard day and I just felt like, all right, how can I use what I'm learning and encourage you guys because I know I'm not the only one who has hard days. I know um, I'm not the only one with difficult times and so I want to share what I do when those days come because they do. This is real life. We have moments where our heart breaks. We have emotions and we're emotional human beings and I believe that the Lord gave us those emotions and it's important to walk through those and to feel them. Um, but it's also important to understand how to deal with them because I do believe that there's a way to use them and honor the Lord and there's a way to let it cause your heart to become cold and to be spiteful. Um, so just a little background, the past few weeks, the last month has been really hard. Um, just before Thanksgiving, two weeks before Thanksgiving, my grandpa had a stroke. And obviously I live in Japan, I'm not near my family, so I'm, I'm far away from them. And then two weeks, like just the night after Thanksgiving, he passed away. Um, and we don't have, you know, unlimited resources financially, so I wasn't able to fly home for that. I had a trip planned for February anyways, so I will be home for that, which will be amazing, but um, it's hard. It's hard to live overseas, and a lot of those moments when this was going on, I was home alone because Josh would be on the road, and obviously he doesn't have a choice of if he goes or not. He he has to go when the, when the games are, right? Um, so I would be here in my apartment dealing with those emotions on my own um, and so and then so like simultaneously there was also this incredible opportunity with work going on um, to be able to help as many people as I could partnering with um, a local school to, to help uh, them receive a $50,000 donation and on the last day of the month I was basically in qualifications to make that happen. I had done it. Um, something went wrong with one of the ways the one of the orders was processed and it made it was just a silly error and it made the difference between me being able to have that earn have qualified and earned that donation and not um, and they're still in communication about whether or not um, they will honor it because honestly I think that obviously I believe that it, regardless of the situation we worked incredibly hard we did stuff at as, as a team that we've never done before we did earn that we did place in that position um, there was an error, and unfortunately, it's something that's out of my control. I can't control whether or not they, um, their systems, they're able to override what happens. And I was heartbroken today when I woke up and heard that there may be nothing I can do about it. And it's the difference between us earning $2,000 for our team retreat and us earning the $50,000 donation for a local school. That, that was the difference. And... Honestly, I cried a lot this morning, a lot of tears. Because I don't know about you guys, but I was just journaling and I just felt like, gosh, I'm hurting. I feel like I keep trying to win this race that I have no chance of winning, whether it's wanting to be a mom and just having that door continue to close on me month in and month out and having that not change and it's like okay lord like cool so there's a time frame that you have right but like when is that when is that over like when is it my turn when when is my waiting in the waiting room while everyone passes me by when is it my turn um so dealing, you know, feeling like, gosh, I can't move forward in my personal life, business, having that 
complete upset and horrible heartache about what the work that we want, we put into it and not having it count. That's hard. Having my grandpa pass away, being here in this apartment by myself and dealing with a lot of this on my own, I just felt like, gosh, I can't win this race, Lord. I am running as hard as I can. I'm doing things I never thought I'd be able to do and yet I'm loot like I'm continually getting shot down. Like not just like kind of like, oh, it just didn't work out, like failing miserably. And that's how it feels. And I just felt like, Lord, where's my victory? Because I read day in and day out in my devotionals that I'm victorious through Christ. I'm victorious, I'm victorious, and I tell myself, I can do this, you're victorious, like Christ is strong through you, God is living through you, you can't, but he can. And I tell myself, I have the potential of a God who destroys cities by marching around its walls and who defeats Goliath with a stone. That's my God, and I tell myself that, and I walk in faith knowing that's my God, but then the mountain falls on me, or I fall off the mountain, or whatever, and I just feel broken, like, there's no victory here, God. I haven't gotten a, one vic like, nothing's going my way. <laughs> And I keep saying, that's not fair, that's not fair, that's not fair. When someone announces who's like, you know, and, and this isn't like a personal attack on anyone, but like if I see someone announce that, you know, they, they're pregnant and they've been married for a couple weeks or something, that kills me because I'm like, Lord, they weren't even trying. I'm trying. I am petitioning heaven's gates every single day for an answer and you're giving it to them. They don't even want it. And that's my heart. Like, that's my burden. And I know that there are, you know, I know that children are a blessing, but then I feel like, well, why can't I get that blessing? And I just ask myself the same question, Lord, where is my victory? Or the same thing with this situation with our business. Lord, where's the victory here? I worked my butt off in ways and done things I've never done possible. I ex totally blew through the glass ceiling of self-doubt and I conquered that and there's no reward? I didn't achieve the goal? Like how, how, how did this, why? Those questions just keep coming up and I don't know about you, but we have to deal with those questions. We can't just be like, tough luck, let's move on. We're emotional human beings. I have to deal with the emotions of anger and bitterness and resentment and jealousy that come up when I see a pregnancy announcement. And I have to deal with anger and frustration and the lack of fairness when it comes to business if there's things that do not go the way that they should. And I have to deal with the emotions. I cannot just sweep them under the rug and I don't think that's what God asks us to do. So whether you're angry, whatever you're going through right now, that you're like, God, we've been talking about this. I've been petitioning your feet. Like I've been at your feet. I've been petitioning your presence for this answer to prayer. And all you do is close the door and lock it on me every time. So what do we do? And when I found myself asking this question, Lord, where's my victory? I heard the word Jesus. And I was like, what? <laughs> and he was like, me. And then he told me like, your victory was never promised on this earth. And that's hard to hear when you want a victory when you want a victory with having kids, when you want a victory with fertility, when you want a victory in your business, when you want a victory in whatever it may be, relationships, school, work, finances, whatever it is you're looking for victory in, it is hard to hear that there may not be victory on this side of earth, this side of heaven. But that's what he spoke to me. And while it crushed me, it also breathed life into me. Because I can go from asking the question, where is my victory, to saying my victory is in you. 
So yeah, I want victory here on earth. I want to be able to have kids. I want to be able to succeed in my business and hit the goals that I have for my team and to be, you know, earning the big bucks and to be, you know, in an incredible position and rank. But The expectations that I have in this life will never be fully met without Christ. And that is my victory. That Christ alone is all I need and the only victory that is given to me. So while we're reading books and stories in amazing ways that God's power moves, there are plenty of stories in scripture where God is not answering the way that we beg him to. You know, I just picked up in 2 Corinthians about Paul. And he says, three times I pleaded with the Lord, three times about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness, therefore I will boast all the more gladly of my weakness, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then I am content with weakness, insults, hardship, persecution, persecutions, calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So I just want to encourage you guys, like, Paul was... If anyone's got the ear of the Lord, it's going to be Paul. And he begged the Lord three times over for that to be removed, for him to be given victory in that area of his life. And he wasn't, he was not given victory in that area on this side of heaven. And you know what he did? He thanked the Lord for it. He praised God for it. And he learned to adjust his perspective from the lens of woe is me to the lens of Jesus, it's okay. Your grace is enough. Your power is made strong in my weakness. It's sufficient. And I just want to ask me particularly and anyone else watching this, wherever your faith is at, is it enough? Like, if I never have kids, is it enough that Jesus has saved me and he's given me eternal life? Because that's my victory. Nowhere in scripture does it say, Courtney, you're going to have kids. That's going to be your victory over fertility. Nowhere in scripture does it say, Courtney, when you go through that business issue, you're going to get victory. They're going to change their, their, you know, they're going to change the situation. They're going to overrule it. You're going to win that money and you're going to win that donation. It's, you know, nowhere in the scripture does it say life is fair and you'll be treated fairly. If anything, this book is full of heartache and hardship and pain and suffering and disease and nose and the desert and waiting So I wonder, where is your victory? And for me, like, I need to stop saying that's not fair. Because I say that all the time. And I'm like, that's not fair. I earned that. I worked hard for that. Or that's not fair. My husband and I have so much love to give. And I have this burning desire in me to be a mom. It's not fair, God. It's also not fair that Jesus Christ lived perfect life without sin and my sin caused him pain and suffering and ultimately death the separation so that he could bridge the gap for me so next time you're saying it's not fair next time you're in the same boat as I am where you're hurting and you're asking God, where's the victory in this? Like, uh, hello, we've been waiting on the same thing for years. We've been waiting for you to move these mountains. First, he doesn't promise that he's going to move those mountains on this side of the earth, 
on this side of heaven. He doesn't promise that. He's gracious and merciful and compassionate. And most of the time, he does move incredible mountains for his children. And we should never stop hoping or praying for that. But it doesn't mean it's promised. And it doesn't mean that you're not victorious if he doesn't. And I think that's something we have to get out of our heads. Like, you know, what did I do wrong? What did I do to deserve this? Or, you know, like a lot of times I'll think, gosh, like, Maybe I'm, maybe I'm not having enough faith. It has nothing to do with that. God has compassion on who he has compassion. He has mercy on who he has mercy. That's not in our control. But our faith is, and we should continue holding out faith and hope in what God can do through us. We should never let that go. We should hold on to that prayer request. We should hold on to that hope of victory this side of heaven. But if he chooses not to remove that thorn from our flesh, can we still say my victory is in my hands because of the power and the sacrifice and the life of Jesus Christ? Because that's what it's about. It's not about me being safe and secure. It's not about me getting victory after victory or winning or coming out on top or being the best or, whoa, Courtney, she had all these miracles happen for her. That's not what it's about. It's not about me. It's about him. The way I allow this to define me will be the way that I encourage other people to let it define them. So I'm not going to let this define who I am as a coach, as a soon-to-be mom. Who knows if I'm going to be a mom, but I pray that I will. I'm not going to let it define me. I'm not going to let the lack of fertility define me as a woman. And I'm definitely not going to let other people look at me differently just because I haven't had kids yet. My victory is in Jesus Christ. This, this thorn in my flesh is allowing me to boast in God, to boast in his strength, to boast in the power of Christ that has overcome the grave. And for that reason, I will be content with struggles, with pain, with heartache, with things that break my heart because I know that it breaks his heart too. And I don't care what the end result is. I don't care if I ever have kids or if I never, you know, make the millions club or anything like that with my business. I care about the fact that I am choosing Christ over any of it. And I'm standing firm that my God can move those mountains. Should he choose not to, he's still good. Should he choose not to remove the thorn in my flesh, he is still the one I praise. He is still capable. He is still strong. I do not need to see it to believe it. That is faith. It's hard for me to have that faith, but Paul did it, and so can I, and so can you. So when your heart breaks, do not let go of the hope that you have in Jesus Christ. Your victory is heaven. Your victory is eternal life with the one who loves you the most. He is not unable to empathize with our weakness, with our pain. He knows. And he's right there with us. And it's our responsibility to not allow the thorns in our flesh to stop us from praising his name, from making his name great, from boasting in the power that he has. Because that, that is what's going to change lives. Someone who has faith regardless of their sight. I hope this encouraged you guys. If it did, please feel free to share it with someone you know. Subscribe. I'm hoping to upload more continuously to the channel and just sharing more real and raw and life. Like, this is me, no makeup, hair's a mess, need highlights, I need my highlights done, like for sure. It's just me, but this is a story that God's given me. There's pain in my heart and in my life, and I can choose to 
let this sink me or I can choose to let it grow me and mold me into the person that he wants for me. It's a choice. So I'll let it sink me or build me, but I'm going to choose build because even though my heart aches so much right now for the things that he has, the mountains he hasn't moved yet, I know that he can. And should he choose not to, I there's always something to be thankful for. I am so blessed. I had the opportunity to do things that I didn't know I was capable of this past month because of the, the challenge. And I had the opportunity to know my grandpa for as long as I did. And I have the opportunity to carry forth a legacy that makes him proud. We always have a choice. Love you guys.